<sighs> now, this is not going to be a rant because I'm not going to yell. I'm not going to scream. That's what people want, but this movie... <laughs> This movie didn't piss me off to that extent. I mean, the movie didn't piss me off at all, but the movie didn't make me mad to that extent. But what's up, guys? Fabio here once again. Welcome back to another video. Welcome to another paid request. This is from Frame by Frame, who wanted me to check out The Watchers, the Dakota Fanning movie that just came out that's directed by M. Night Shyamalama Ding Zong's daughter. Her father, she is not. I will just say that. And I don't even really like his movies. The only movie that he did that I liked was Unbreakable. Other than that, I am not a fan of his films. But I guess she wants to go into the family business and... Yeah. But this was not a good movie. This was lame. This was forgettable. Everybody else thought so as well because it didn't make a fucking dime in America. I think it only made like $9 million. I don't know what it did throughout the rest of the world, but no, nobody asked for this. Nobody wanted to see this, and they didn't because it didn't make any fucking money. And it was lame, and it was generic, and it was forgettable, and it was it was so forgettable that... I don't even think people knew that this was out. The only reason I knew that it was out is because when I was in England, we were at my aunt's house just hanging out, and we were watching TV, and whatever program it was, they interviewed Dakota Fanning for this movie. So there you are. But if anybody else wants to send in a paid request, hopefully it will be a much better movie than this or the next one that I'm going to review. But you may do so down below in the description box. I don't know where YouTube keeps putting it, but I'm just going to keep saying down below because why ruin a good thing? Down below in the description box, there's a link to my PayPal account. No amount is too big. No amount is too small. It does not have to be just a movie review like this. It could be a TV series, cartoon, comic book, video game, music, random thoughts, Ranch streams, commentaries, and anything in between. That's what it is there for. So if you are interested, go ahead, send it in, and I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. For those of you that have sent them in before, thank you. I greatly appreciate it. It means you guys actually care about what I say and do here on the channel. You want to see me try some different things. It does motivate me to keep wanting to make videos, so it's a win-win for everybody. You guys get more of the type of videos that you want to see me cover. I keep making them, and at the end of the day, everybody goes home happy, just like they used to say at Blockbuster. So, thank you. But The Watchers, another lame, fucking forgettable movie in the seemingly endless line of lame, forgettable movies that keep coming out for whatever ungodly reason, that keep being made for whatever ungodly reason, I don't understand how these movies... I've said this a million times, but I don't understand how these movies keep getting funded. I don't understand how these movies keep being greenlit when they are constantly losing money. I, I just don't understand it at all. Now, there, of course, there's going to be hits. There's going to be movies that do actually make money, but... A good chunk of the movies that have been coming out the past couple of years have not been very successful, have not been very profitable. So why do movies keep getting greenlit and why do these com where do these companies get this money, first of all, if they're losing hundreds of millions of dollars? This was put out by Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers has lost hundreds of millions of dollars the past couple of years because they keep putting out flop after flop because nobody gives a shit. But I don't know where they keep getting the credit line from if their movies are, are god-awful. But I digress. I don't know how much this cost. Apparently, M. Night Shyamalama Ding Dong paid for the entire movie out of his own pocket. Warner Brothers paid $30 million for it. They definitely overpaid. I don't even think the movie made anywhere close to that. So, 
it's another flop for them. And Shamalama Ding Dong spent all his own money. Now I'm sure he got, I don't know if it cost 30, but I'm sure he made out good because he sold it. He produced the movie and he put all the financing into it and he let his daughter direct it. There's all this shit on the internet and everything apparently about nepotism and this and that. I don't care. That is all whatever. They said the same thing about Sofia Coppola when she did Godfather 3, but they were put in a bad situation. I kind of understand that one. It doesn't help, but I kind of understand it. They're saying the same thing about Maya Hawk, Ethan Hawk, and Uma Thurman's daughter because she was in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and of course her mom was in Pulp Fiction. I don't care. I don't get into this bullshit. I don't even watch most of this anyway, so... But her father, she is not. Again, I was never really a fan of M. Night Shyamalan Ding Dong. I know his last name is uh, Shyamalan, but I like to say Shyamalan Ding Dong because it's funny. The Sixth Sense, um, the, the twist was revealed as soon as the movie came out, so it was not a surprise to anybody when they actually did get to see the movie. Unbreakable was the only one that I liked. I saw that when it first came out on VHS. I didn't bother to watch Glass because they fucked it up from what I heard. And, of course, the best character in the movie was Bruce Willis' character and they killed him off. What a surprise. Split. I know everybody loves that movie. I don't care. I'm not a fan of James McAvoy. I didn't like him as Professor X. Why would I want to watch him in anything else? The Village, I didn't care to see. Uh, Lady in the Water. Rated PG-13. I'm whispering because that's what they did in all the trailers and the TV spots. Didn't care. I didn't care to see that. I, I don't know if I'm probably missing some things, but I just I don't care about his films. I never did. I always thought he was overrated as fuck. Again, the one exception to the rule would be Unbreakable. That was the only film that he did that I really liked. I have it on Blu-ray somewhere in here. I just haven't watched it yet. Maybe it's time to, to bust that one out. Anyway, his daughter is not him. I don't think this movie is well directed. He probably ghost directed quite a bit of this it, it because it's shot in the same style. It's a lot of the same setups. It's visually, it's very similar to his movies. So I'm sure he ghost directed quite a bit of it and everybody kept their mouth shut. Um, the CG sucks, as with most movies that come out today. It was, uh, the, the plot was nothing special. It was nothing original. It's nothing that you haven't seen before. Dakota Fanning plays an American girl that's living in Ireland because she's trying to get over her mom's death that she caused. She has to deliver this parent. She gets trapped in the woods. These creatures come after her. She ends up with these survivors and the movie goes from there. You find out that the creatures have an aversion to light, so they can only come out at night. What a surprise. You find out that they were fairies. Humans and fairies used to coexist and have kids with each other. They have to figure out how to stop them. They find out that there was a professor, and they find all this information, like in The Evil Dead, and all these other movies that are way better than this. One of the people is the wife of the professor that's a human fairy hybrid, blah, blah, blah. It's, you've seen this movie time and time again. It's nothing fucking original. It's nothing fucking different. Spoiler alert. You've seen this before. But this movie was fucking lame. Now, luckily, it was only 90 minutes. It was not long. Without credits, it's like 87, because the version that I found online did not have credits, so it was like 87 minutes. So it wasn't long, but I could see why this movie didn't make any money. I can see why nobody went and saw it, because they've seen it 9 million fucking times before and better. They saw it from the girl that directed this movie's father. Now, again, opinions vary, but if you like those movies, cool. I don't. Let me look up, because I'm sure I'm missing a few of his films. But, 
again, I, I like I keep saying, I'm sure he ghost directed the film because it looks very, very similar to his stuff. Signs. How could I forget about Signs? The only thing I like in that film is Mel Gibson. That's it. Um, Because it's fucking Mel Gibson. The Happening, never saw, didn't care. The Last Airbender, don't care. After Birth, don't care. The Visit, who's even in that? Uh, I've never... Okay, Catherine Hahn is in it from Step Brothers. Um, yeah, I never even, I, I don't even know. Split, don't care. Gla- old, I forgot. He did Old and Knock at the Cabin. I don't care about these films. Again, I do not care about these movies other than, again, Unbreakable. Unbreakable was the only movie that I enjoyed. But... Hopefully, I don't think his daughter's going to get much work after this because nobody went and fucking saw this. I don't know what the marketing was like, the the reach or whatever, because I didn't pay attention to it. Again, the only way that I knew is because uh, I saw an interview with Dakota Fanning when I was in England. That's it. And you know what? Dakota Fanning cannot act anymore. I don't know what happened. Um, but a lot of... A, a lot of child actors, when they become adults, they cannot act. They forget how to act. Alex Vincent is that way. I like Alex Vincent in Child's Play 1 and 2. In the older movies where he came back, I thought he was awful. Uh, Corey Feldman, as an adult actor, is fucking terrible. Amongst other things, that's the least of his problems. But Dakota Fanning cannot act. I liked her as a child actress. I liked her in movies like Man on Fire. And Steven, the Steven Spielberg War of the Worlds and some of the other stuff that I saw her in. But I don't know what happened. It's like she forgot how to act. And I, I know she's in Equalizer 3. I heard she's not very good in that movie either. I just... Maybe she just stopped giving a shit. I know she took a lot of time off like in her teenage years and her early adult years because she went to school and like college and and that's fine but you know acting you have to keep with it it's just it's a perishable skill just like anything else if you haven't done it in forever you have to get back into that but she was terrible in this movie i kind of like felt bad to be honest i mean yeah she's still i think she's attractive i always thought i mean when i was her and i are only a year apart um I always thought she was really cute when she was a kid, and she's not ugly now as an adult. I don't think she's drop-dead gorgeous, but she's pretty. So is her sister. But I was just, like, I just could not believe how bad her acting was in this movie. It's, again, I I kind of felt bad for her because she, she was one, especially when she was the kind of the talk of the town, she was one of the better child actresses at that time. I don't think anybody would disagree. But it's it's like anything else. It is a perishable skill. You have to keep working at it. It's not just going to always be with you. I mean, hell, there's actors that as they get older, they suck. What you know, when they started as adults and they're still acting, some of them suck. And I'm not, you know, like fucking Robert De Niro. Anyway, for, but he sucks for other reasons too. But this movie was lame. This movie was boring. This was forgettable. I can see why nobody went and watched it. I can see why it didn't make any money. It's You've seen this movie a million times before. It's nothing special. It's nothing different. It's nothing original. They tried to, to hype it based on the people involved, on the names involved, but it didn't help. The CG was awful. The story was generic. It's nothing... I mean, if you if you really want a good sleeping pill, this this will work. It almost put me to sleep, but this movie blows again. This is not a rant and a rave because it didn't make me angry. It's just like, yep, we've seen this a million times before. We're gonna see it a million times after. It's nothing unique. It's nothing different. Whatever. Anyway. 
So I hope that you guys enjoyed this. The other paid request that Frame by Frame sent in, which I'm surprised I didn't get this one in sooner, but it's for fucking Madam Web. That will be a rant because of just how astronomically fucking terrible that movie is. So that'll be the next one. That will be full rant, full-blown rant territory. So we'll get to that soon here. But anyway, happy trails until then. Later. <laughs>